Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and today I've been invited by Sydney Metro to take a look inside Chatsworth Dive Site, including into the tunnels below. So leading our trip into the tunnels is Hugh Lawson, who is the Project Director for Sydney Metro City and South West. And being a live construction site, we needed to wear some PPE. Access to the tunnels is via the Northern Dive Building. This is now operational with 11 kilowatts of high voltage electricity going into it, which is then transformed into lower voltages to power the equipment inside. And it wasn't long before we found what looks like a jet engine. This is a tunnel ventilation system and these are at every station or every underground station. Within this northern dive site building are two of these, one for each tunnel, and here is the other one. And all the new underground stations will have four of these tunnel ventilation fans, that's two at each end of the station. Besides keeping the tunnels cool, these will extract smoke in the event of a fire. At the moment they are not connected up, but that will be happening quite soon. And these are tunnel attenuators, they control airflow and reduce noise for passengers on trains and in stations. Now time to go all the way down to the bit that you've all been waiting for. So now entering the dive site structure, and this is the southbound line on the right. Although excited to see this, I was also keeping safety at the top of my mind. And one thing that really impressed me was the safety procedures in place, including the steps that other people were taking to keep me safe on this live construction site. So now walking in the other direction towards the southbound tunnel itself. Just like in the Metro Northwest tunnels, a rigid bar is used instead of overhead wires, and within the dive site structure it is held in place by cantilevers on the left wall. On the right you can see pipes, cable trays and lots of cables, and a good view of the dive site roof as well. And on the roof over here is another part of the tunnel ventilation system, and I'll show you this from the other side in a moment. And the lights on the right are coming from the northbound tunnel. All the lights are currently temporary, but they still do a great job of illuminating the tunnels. And just before the tunnels themselves is a large passageway that leads to the northbound tunnel that you saw a moment ago, and a little way behind that is the other dive site external wall. An access road runs alongside this wall, coming out here and then ascending to the surface. In the early days, this was used to remove the excavated spoil from the TBMs as they were boring the tunnels, now it's used for construction vehicle access. So now entering the southbound tunnel, and this seemed like a good time to clarify some tunnel terminology with Hugh. So my question to Hugh is, um, what's the difference between a tunnel portal, a tunnel and a dive site? Yeah. So what's behind us here is the actual tunnel portal. Okay. You can see from here on, this is the actual tunnel rings. This was the bit that the TBM actually bored. Okay. This is the end of the tunnel proper. From here up towards Chatswood, what you've got is what we call the dive. So it's basically a ramp as we ramp the tracks up to meet the Sydney Metro Northwest lines at Chatswood and make that connection uh, out there just south of Chatswood. So this area we're in now is just at the end of the dive structure and right. above us is the Northern Dive Building. Right above us you can see where the tunnel vent fans feed in and out the tunnel. So you saw the fans above, yeah. this is the nozzle that connects into right, the okay, tunnel yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah. You can see things like the fixed bar for the overhead wiring, yeah. that's where the power comes into the trains. And at the moment we're still in a transition between temporary tunnel systems for things like lighting and ventilation, but we're moving towards uh, transitioning to our permanent systems, still fitting out some of the final bits of equipment in right, the tunnels. Okay, yeah. So yeah. that's the sort of thing you'll see behind yeah, us, yeah. heading down towards Crow's Nest Station. Within the tunnels, the rigid bar is held in place by insulated supports that have been attached to the tunnel roof. Under the walkways are the high voltage electrification cables, and further up the elevated cable routes that contain signalling and communications cables. On the lower part of the tunnel wall on the left side are noise reduction blocks. They reduce the amount of noise in the tunnels so that passengers have a quieter and more comfortable journey. This block in the forefoot, that's the area between the rails, is also for sound insulation. And they work in a similar way to the ones on the tunnel wall. And whilst I was looking at this yellow grid, Hugh explained what was hiding underneath it. You're yeah. on the grids that are protecting a Belize, so that's part of the signalling system here at, um, yeah. on Sydney Metro. So that's actually the, the actual intelligent bit is hidden under there. This is yeah. just protecting it. You'll see these throughout the tunnel. They're part of how the train and the signalling control system knows where the trains are, how fast they're going, what's going on. I asked Hugh to explain the reasons for using concrete track slabs in the tunnel sections, and here is his answer. 
We need good control over the geometry of the track. Yeah. We don't want any movement because we've got so much equipment right around the train's kinematic envelope. So that's the outline of space occupied by a train when it's in motion, and it defines the limit to how much it can move laterally and vertically along its route. Factors that influence this include the train's speed, bogey suspension and the curvature of the track, and track slabs minimise this movement. Um, and also, this metro will be running um, very high frequency, high reliability, extensive operating hours, so we have very small maintenance windows. We want to minimise the amount of maintenance we need to do in the tunnels themselves. So track slab is uh, a great solution for that. If this was ballasted track, you'd need to be out there maintaining it much more regularly, much more intensively. Um, of course, at the ends, as we go up the dive, we transition onto ballasted track, yeah. heading towards Chatswood yeah. and down at Sydenham, of course. And when we head onto the Bankstown line, ultimately, as part of the southwest part of the project, that's very much all existing ballasted track. As I mentioned earlier, the tunnel lighting is temporary and these fans are temporary as well. They are needed to keep the tunnel at a comfortable temperature for the people working within it and to promote airflow. Hugh now talks about the tunnel layout and explains the purpose of the walkways on the right. Effectively, the tunnel layout is exactly the same as on the northwest. So if you go on the northwest, you'll see the same configuration with a walkway. It's there for the maintainer to use for access for maintenance. It's not there for use of passengers during a train evacuation, because yeah. you'll know that's actually through the front yeah, of the yeah. train. They would come down onto the track and exit yeah. that way. Now walking towards the Chatswood end, and the cantilevers holding the rigid bar in place have switched to the opposite wall. So Hugh, a question that's always been on my mind is, why is a rigid bar used in the tunnels as opposed to conventional overhead wires? Um, again, it's part of the, the fixity of the system. It's lower maintenance for us within the tunnels when they're in operation. Uh, so what you see, and you'll see it on Metro Northwest, is the rigid bar system within the tunnels itself. But then in a lot of the above ground sections, you'll see a conventional overhead wiring system, catenary system. Yeah. And you can see behind us that transition point as we head out yeah. of the tunnel here. Yeah. You can see the copper, the contact, if you like, on the rigid bar. Most of what you can see is actually, if you like, st the structure that supports it and holds yeah. it in yeah. place. Yeah. Uh, but you can see the copper, which is the actual kind of contact part oh, right. that makes okay. contact with the yeah, pantograph. Yeah. yeah. That's something you just wouldn't see if, unless you were this close. You wouldn't just see that from the train, I don't think. No. Nope. Notice the slight overlap between the overhead wires starting and the rigid bar conductor system finishing. Now out of the tunnels and looking out of the Northern Dive building, and you can see the Chatsworth Dive site structure below us and the northbound North Shore line running over it. And whilst enjoying the view, we reminisced about how the Sydney trains lines had changed over the years to create space to build the tunnels and dive site, so here is a brief history. So prior to construction, the two North Shore lines looked like this, with a siding that finished just beyond the old Nelson Street Bridge. This was in 2016. Then by 2018, tunnelling work was well in progress, and the southbound North Shore line was about to be moved to the right, and the Nelson Street Bridge would soon be demolished. And by August 2019, the southbound line had been moved, but some of the old track remained in place because it will be reused. And by November 2019, that reused track became part of a new northbound line that was closer to the rear line southbound line, and the existing northbound line on the left was about to go. By early 2020, the new northbound line was in use, with the old one removed, and this enabled work on the dive site structure to progress within the rail corridor. And once this was completed, the northbound line was moved again to run over the top of the new dive site structures. This happened in March 2021, and this track is now in its permanent position. Then removing the old track allowed the dive site structures to be completed, along with the ramps to bring the lines to the surface. Interestingly, the current Google Aerial View image is quite old, and shows the TBM outside the northbound tunnel, along with the original Sydney Trains track alignment. Now heading back to the site office, and this building will soon be going. It was used to store spoil from the TBMs, until the spoil could be transported away for reuse at other locations. And as I mentioned in a previous video, this area will be released for development that will be low rise and a shared path will run through it as well. And of course, Mowbray House will be part of the future development. So I'd like to thank the Sydney Metro Public Affairs team and also the staff at Chatswood Dive Sites for making this visit possible. And also a special thanks to Hugh for being such an amazing guide and answering my many questions. So thank you for watching my videos and helping my channel grow to a level where behind the scenes videos like these become possible. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And if you'd like to see more videos more often, then do support me on Patreon as that really helps. There's a link below. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon in my next video.